Hello, this is Matt Sherwood with Tech and Stuff, and I am here to show you how to make a print in place fidget spinner with Fusion 360. So, Fusion 360 is a new program that, as far as uh, my demonstrations go, there are certainly plenty of videos out there about it. But uh, I've made this in order to show my students how to make uh, ball bearings and fidget spinners. And these are a couple of the ones that I've demonstrated to them. As you can see, I did this whole video a few minutes ago only to realize that my microphone was not on. <laughs> Typical. All right. So as far as the one I just showed, I will show you. I'm going to try to recreate this, and I'll show you in reverse uh, kind of how it all happened. But I'll take you one step at a time in order to get this done right. Now, you'd think it's fairly complicated and it's really not. So let's go back to the beginning here and learn how to make a fidget spinner. Okay, so if you haven't downloaded Autodesk Fusion 360 yet, do it. It's free for students and learners and educators and pretty much anybody who isn't making a boatload of money off of it. Even if you are a small business, you're allowed to use it. So let's start out by making a sketch. So let's go to the sketch menu and the sketch can also be called a profile, but I talk in terms that my students understand, and so I don't always use the same lingo as the pros. I'm going to click on the bottom plane here because I want to print it on a printer, and so I want it flat. It's a little easier. I'm going to start out by making four circles. If we make 140, that's going to be our largest. Then I'm going to repeat that three more times, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. So making sure I'm creating this from the very center, I'm going to make one that's 25. And then I'm going to make a, another one that is 22.5. And then I'm going to make another one. That is 20. So four circles, 40, 25, 22.5, and 20. Then I'm going to stop that sketch. From this point, I want to start making it 3D already. So I'm going to choose the Create menu and choose Extrude to do this. I'm going to tap on the outside ring and the inside ring. I like to go to the home view because I can see in 3D what's going on. And then on this little wizard, I'm going to change one of the settings from one-sided extrusion to a symmetric extrusion. What that does is it expands equally on both sides of my sketch. Brought it out to 5 millimeters, and now I'm going to click OK. So what happens when you extrude is normally the sketch you're using disappears. So I'm going to turn that sketch back on because we need it. From the top view, now, we're going to carve out the channels that our ball bearings will spin around in. So to do that, we're going to create a shape called a torus. And it's very careful where, be careful where you click now. What we want to do is we want to zoom in and click right on this section here, not on any of these other surfaces. So click in between your three-dimensional services. And now I'm going to come back and click in the middle after I've done this and make this match up exactly 22.5 millimeters. And my torus diameter needs to change. So at the moment it is set as 6 millimeters. Well, what we're going to do is change that to 8 millimeters and you'll probably need to type that in. We do want to keep it as a cut because we actually want to remove some of the material from our three-dimensional shapes. Click OK. Now if you look at this in the home view, you can see that you'll have these channels cut around the inside and the outside. OK, so our next thing is going to be we're going to put in the ball bearings. In order to do this, first we're going to construct an axis through the cylinder. 
and you'll see that turquoise line will show up right through the center. The next step is to simply create a sphere. We have to be careful again where you click. Don't click here, don't click here, click in between your three-dimensional shapes first to set the plane and then I'm looking for right on the axis of this circle, this blue circle and this green axis. Okay, It probably won't jump to 7.5 millimeters because that's what I had it at before. That is exactly what we want it though, 7.5 millimeters. Click OK. And so now we have a new body making that ball bearing. And uh, you want to make sure that it doesn't turn red. If it turns red, it means it's touching the sides of one of these other shapes, which is a problem. Make sure that it still looks like a metal ball bearing, and it usually does even look shiny. I'm going to now create a pattern and choose a circular pattern. It's, it gives you a little wizard. The wizard is very helpful. It just wants us to first pick the thing that we want to run a pattern on. So I'm going to click on my ball bearing. Then I'm going to select the axis that we made a little while ago. And if you go to the top view, you're going to see it a little more clearly what's going on. So we have three ball bearings in there. I'm going to change that. Not enough. So I'm going to change it to 6, 7, 8, 9. If you notice, if you move it up to 10, you're going to have some overlap in your ball bearings, and they're literally going to be printed together. Don't want that. So change it to 9 so there's a very small gap between your ball bearings. It allows them to spin freely. I'm going to click OK. So at this point, we have our ball bearing created. If we printed this on a 3D printer, it absolutely would work. It would spin, kind of like a small tire. Uh, it's not going to spin like a metal ball bearing, but you'll be able to fidget with it in your hand. Some people like to make them small like this just because they can do it with one hand. But what generally people are doing is I like to make a, some sort of a pattern that we can spin around the center. It'll give it a little more speed as we want to spin it. So for that, two things. I'm going to turn off my sketches for a minute. No, I take that back. I'm going to turn off my bodies for a minute so I can just see the sketches. And then I'm just going to decide on what kind of spoke I'm going to make. Is it going to be with straight lines? Then use the line tool. Is it going to be with circles and arcs like many fidget spinners are? Then use circle and arcs. You could do it with any shape you want, really ellipses. I'm going to choose a spline tool. Spline just makes nice curvy lines. I'm going to try to do it in a fairly even manner. So I'm going to click on the surface I want to make this on and then I need to get a little space worked out. So I like to just zoom out and zoom back in. And I'm going to start right here on my circle. And do pay attention to how far you come out with this. You generally don't want to make it more than 25 millimeters from the ball bearing. Each of these larger squares is 5, so at the moment I'm going out about 5, 10, 15, 20. I'm aiming for about 25, so. And just some sort of uh, interesting shape. And I'm going to go with something like that. Double click to end the spline. Kind of looks like a fan blade. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add for interest just in an ellipse, which another name for that is just an oval. Nothing mysterious here. And you stretch it into a line and then you move and it'll change the, the shape of the ellipse. I'm going to go with that. Then I'm going to stop the sketch. So what you have is a spoke. Good idea now to turn your bodies back on to see what, so you can see what you're doing. I'm going to now create an extrusion with just this shape. 
I'm going to choose a symmetric extrusion so that it goes both ways. Now I usually just bring it up to about four millimeters. If you want it to print perfectly flat on the print bed with no support, at least on this shape, then you might want to bring it all the way out to five. But I'm going to drop it into four. I've never had much of a problem cleaning it up after the print. Now that looks okay. Um, not bad. What I'm going to do though to make this look even nicer is I'm going to modify it with a rule fillet and that will round off the edges. You can choose how much to round it off. I'm going to go for a two millimeter edge there and click OK. And you'll notice that it rounds up close to the ball bearing. Everywhere else it rounds down into the circles. Now if I do this again on the other side, I'm going to do another rule fillet on this surface and it just does it everywhere. Jump to two this time because I've already used that. So I'm going to click OK. And so at that point we have a pretty nice looking spoke on our fidget spinner. Uh, to try to duplicate that two more times in the exactly the right spot would be very difficult. So what we want to do is we want to use our pattern tool again. So we're going to first slip to the home view so you can see it in a different angle and then I'm going to create a pattern in a circle. I could click on all of these surfaces and it wouldn't be too terribly hard but it's easier just to click on the last three steps I did and it'll select all of the geometry that's associated with that spoke. Then I'm going to select the axis and you'll notice it automatically puts three spokes on there. You could change it uh, if you wanted to uh, but I think it spins better with three so you could even go down to two if you wanted but I tend to like three so I'm going to click OK made a perfect copy, two perfect copies of that spoke down. Uh, from this point, it's really up to you how you decorate your spinner. Uh, one thing I like to do is I like to extrude this center a little more, just on one side, another couple millimeters up. Gives you an extra little handhold. And there's different things you could do. You could make it divot it or something. I To add a little texture, I usually just put my initials on it and that'll help hold it in place. So I'm going to sketch a with the text and click carefully on the surface you want to do it on. And don't worry too much about where it is yet. Uh, I'm just looking for this little text wizard here and I'm gonna I'm just gonna go for an S because I have a Superman complex and it's part of my last name. Uh, find a font you like doesn't really matter. I, I would recommend if you're 3D printing it to stay from away from fonts that are overly cursive. Those tend not to work as well, at least unless you print it at a very high quality. That's about as much as I can usually deal with. So I'm going to make that a 15 millimeter S. Oh shoot, I didn't mean to. <laughs> I should have moved that before, but I could uh, I should be able to move that now. Let me see if I can get this to, there we go. Just use the move tool. It's easier to do it without the move tool is all. Up a little bit. And I think that's fine. Okay. From here, let's make that three dimensional. So we're just going to create an extrude. I'm going to drop it in maybe two millimeters, one or two, and you'll see that it makes a nice S in three dimensions. If you want this to look even a little more polished, you can run some more fillets. This time I don't want to do it on all the edges, so I'm just going to do this edge and this edge. And the reason not all is because it kind of interferes with the spoke. Change it to one millimeter, click OK. I could have actually done all of them both sides at the same time but it's all right flat this side and this side and let's change that to one millimeter click OK so from here 
As far as I'm concerned, that looks pretty finished to me. You could, again, do more if you wanted. Um, to get it ready for 3D printing is very simple. All we're going to do is click on it three times, or two or three times. Right click. If you have a mouse that you can right click on, I believe if you're using a Mac, you're going to do a control click or option click or something like that. And then do save as STL. Uh, if you want to view all the triangles that it's going to make or the mesh, then click on preview mesh and it'll show you all these millions, well, not millions, thousands of triangles. And uh, sometimes that window disappears. 53,000 triangles, quite a bit. You can do more if you want. If you want it even more refined, you can choose even higher quality. I don't find it necessary, but you could. You could also send it to a 3D printing utility like Simplify 3D or uh, MakerBot Print um, if you set it up. I'm going to click OK, and then it just allows you to save it as an STL. For me, I'm going to just call it Fidget Example 2. And that's it. So have fun fidgeting and making a fidget spinner. Leave me a comment if you happen to make one and like it. I would love to see those and see how, how well you did. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.